What are the Twins' five biggest needs going into the offseason? Free agency opens Thursday. You're going to want to know what the Twins will be looking for this winter. It's all coming up on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Wednesday, November 9th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thanks for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every single day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And this is Nash Walker, three seasons hosting a daily podcast on the Minnesota Twins, four seasons writing about the Minnesota Twins at twinsdaily.com. What are the Twins' five biggest needs this offseason? We've touched on them. I want to put them in my order because everybody's order is different. I'm going to put them in my order of what I think the Twins need most this winter as they look at free agency, they look at trades, they look to shake things up. What do I think needs the most improvement, the most addition, the most tuning for the 2023 season? I have five. I think there are five clear ones in general for the Twins, but everybody has them ranked differently. Last year, the Twins' biggest needs, number one, was a frontline starter. Number two was a frontline starter. Number three was a mid-rotation starter. Number four was a mid-rotation starter. And number five was a shortstop, I would say. that was <laughs> Those were their needs last year. Maybe shortstop was third or fourth, and you moved one of those mid-rotation starters. But no doubt, above all else, frontline starter was number one. Frontline starter was number two. They got Sonny Gray, so they checked off one box. And then Tyler Malley at the deadline, hoping he'll be a frontline starter. And those underlying metrics come to come home to roost for the twins it's still up in the air we'll see i they didn't absolve from my list this year a frontline starter i promise you that we'll go from the bottom let's go from the bottom the five biggest needs for the twins this offseason number five and this is ranked in importance so number one is the most important number five is a catcher and that might surprise you you know catcher might be higher on your list but the truth is that catchers can't hit anyway and the twins in 2022 their catching group. Think about how Gary Sanchez didn't hit. Ryan Jeffers didn't really hit. Sandy Leon didn't hit at all. Even with given all of those factors, the Twins were in the top half in wins above replacement among their catching group. That's how low the bar is for catchers. That's how low the bar is offensively for catchers. So to me, it's not a super high priority because the bar for it is so low. Like I think it's one of the easier things to fill. I also believe that Ryan Jeffers is a good platoon option. He can hit left-handed pitching. I agree they need a better catcher who can hit right-handed pitching. And there's a clear guy on the market in Omar Narvaez. We're going to talk about him this offseason and his fit with the Twins. But they can't hit anyway, really anywhere. There's like three or four catchers in baseball who hit at a really high level. Will Smith, JT Romuto. It used to be Asmati Grandal, not really anymore. Wilson Contreras, he's a free agent. We'll get to him. But it's it's number five to me. And I think it's it's somewhat of a clear number five. To me, because I think it's fairly easy to fill, and the Twins had a top half group already in 2022. Does that mean I think they shouldn't address it in earnest? No, they absolutely should, and they will. To me, there are just four other areas that need more attention than catcher. If it was me, these are the five in order that I would pay attention to. You can go out and get Martin Maldonado. You can go out and get Omar Narvaez. You can go out and get, you know, bring back Sandy Leon. There's a bunch of good defensive catchers out there. Wilson Contreras is the exception offensively because he's so good, but then you sacrifice the defense, and we'll get to Wilson Contreras. As I said, catcher's number five on my list, and again, it's a clear number five for me because I just don't I don't think that it's a pressing need on the roster. You may feel differently, and there's a clear hole at catcher, so I could be talked into it, I think, but right now, it's not there for me. It's number five. Number four is a high-end reliever, a high-end reliever. Preferably right-handed, I think, high-end reliever, because what it does, the Twins' biggest problem, I would say, over the last couple of years has been their bullpen and trusting veterans who have hurt them over and over and over because they don't have replacements. When you add a high-end reliever to a group that already looks like it could be formidable with Yohan Duran and Griffin Jackson, Jorge Lopez and Caleb Thielbar and Giovanni Moran look very good, a group that could be really formidable, you add another high-end reliever to that the floor is raised. If somebody's in the closer role and they struggle, hopefully it's, you know, Yohan Duran is pitching mostly ninth innings for the Twins in 2023 or Duran gets hurt. 
you have a higher floor because you added another high-end reliever and it doesn't hurt as much. Your floor is higher. And then the ceiling, if everybody's healthy and everybody's pitching well, you have so much talent back there, the the ceiling is high and it can become a strength and it, it could turn into a strength for the Twins going into 2023. That would require an addition. As it currently stands, I could see the bullpen being a strength, but I don't think it's a clear strength a clear prediction as a strength. I don't think you look at that bullpen and say, oh, that's clearly a strength for the Twins. It could be if things break right, but if they add a high-end reliever, it could turn into a strength. And a, a large part of this too is there are a lot of question marks with the rotation and the health in the rotation. So I think it's going to be important for the Twins to have a good bullpen. Last year, the formula was we have starters who don't go very long or we don't let them go very long at, at points and our bullpen lacks and is shallow. It's not a good formula. You got to fix one of those ends. And I think the Twins might be in a better spot to fix the relief end of that, where they have a really strong bullpen to support a staff that has a lot of innings question marks with Kenta Maeda, Tyler Malley, Sonny Gray, Bailey Ober, a lot of question marks with innings. Making the bullpen a strength could ease some of those pains, I think, in 2023. So high-end reliever is number four. Catcher is number five. Top three coming right at you. What are the top three needs for the Twins this offseason? After this word from Simply Safe. If you've thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Lockdown Twins listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package theft spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out the Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Number three, the number three need for the Twins is a frontline starter, simply because they don't have a clear number one on their staff. Sonny Gray pitches like a number one at times, but a true number one or an ace, whatever verbiage you want to use, Pitches like a number one in 80% of their starts. Stays healthy, you know, throws a bunch of innings for you. Can go deep in games and not have that penalty as much the third time through the order because they are a number one or an ace level starter. There's no clear number one on the twin staff. I think Sonny Gray is a number two. I think a healthy Tyler Malley is a number two slash number three. Joe Ryan is a three, four. Bailey Ober is a three, four. Kenta Maeda is probably a three, four projecting for 2023. I'm hopeful Louis Varlin's a 4-5 and Simeon woods Richardson is a 4-5, but there's no clear one on this roster. If you add a clear number one starter, the fear factor is prominent. The fear factor matters. The fear factor is, here's an example. We threw Joe Ryan on Friday. We threw Bailey Ober on Saturday. And oh, the lineup flips over. Here's Carlos Rodon on Sunday as we go for the series win. There's a fear factor in that. For the opponent, there's a, a fear factor in that for yourselves, knowing that you have Carlos Rodon going on Sunday. And it just makes you feel so much more confident. It doesn't guarantee you anything. It doesn't guarantee you a win by any means. You're still going to lose you know, 30 35% of those starts with an ace on the mound normally. But it, it gives you this peace of mind. It gives you this peace of mind that you know you have this, this horse ready to go in a series finale or in the deciding game of a series or the opener of a big time series in September, you got a number one starter and the twins don't have that right now. It also adds depth. So it pushes everybody down a ring, which I think this, this twin staff could benefit from. I think they could go with a six man rotation in 2023 out of the gate and adding a clear number one starter would allow them to do that, to take the innings off of everybody else. 
You know, if you go with a six man rotation for a couple weeks out of spring training, it reduces the workload on guys who need it in Bailey Ober and Kenta Maeda, uh, in Sonny Gray, in Tyler Malley. It reduces that workload. Frontline starter is number three. A couple of free agents for you Jacob deGrom, Justin Berlander, Carlos Rodon, Clayton Kershaw. Those are the only clear, like, number ones, I think right now on the market there will be guys signed who pitch like number ones in 2023 and maybe the twins will find one of them whether that's nathan yavaldi or andrew heaney whoever it may be but right now there are only four clear number ones to me guys you would get that feeling for when they're on the mound on a sunday and that's jacob Degrom, justin verlander carlos Rodon, and clayton kershaw and with three of those four i don't think the twins have any chance i think their only chance is carlos Rodon there on the free agent market but you can fill this with a trade target as well. You can fill this via trade. And I actually like that idea. I think they have to fill one of these five via trade because it gives you more financial flexibility in the free agent market to go sign somebody for one of your other bigger needs. And I'd say their two biggest needs will be their most expensive needs. Maybe not. Maybe the frontline starter would be, but I think their their top two needs will be the most expensive. So frontline starter is number three. I would say there's a drop off from one to two. And number two, it might surprise you, that I have this over frontline starter, over a high-end reliever, over a catcher, is a big bat and preferably a right-handed bat. You could kill two birds with one stone with Wilson Contreras. You could fill need number two. You could fill need number five by signing Wilson Contreras. That'll be an investment. It'll be 20, 20 plus million dollars a year to fill two holes, but you'd be filling two holes at one time because Wilson Contreras is a great right-handed bat and he just happens to be a catcher. Here's why I think this. Last year, the Twins were 17th in weighted runs created plus that's below league average versus left-handed pitching. And they were tied for fifth versus right-handed pitching further. The twins right-handed hitters among all right-handed hitters on every team last year were tied for 11th in weighted runs created plus their left-handed hitters were top six. They were sixth in weighted runs created plus they have some, they have some special left-handed bats. Jorge Polanco is great from the left side. Luis Arise is an awesome left-handed hitter. There's still hope for Alex Kirilov. There's still hope for Trevor Larnick. You know, you got Matt Walner coming. Max Kepler still on the team. As of right now, you have some left-handed bats there. I'm not saying they shouldn't target left-handed bats, but that should be a strength of the team. They've built themselves around left-handed corner bats. I would love a big right-handed bat to add to this group. What does that look like? A right-handed hitter who can hit 250 with an 800 OPS and crushes left-handed pitching. I think that would go a long way for this team. The Twins, they got into some slumps, bad slumps in 2022, and that happens to a lot of teams, but the Twins would get into prolonged periods where they had trouble scoring runs. And in my opinion, they need another big right-handed bat, and they're losing one in Carlos Correa, unless you do that two birds, one stone by signing Carlos Correa or by signing Wilson Contreras, but you're losing Correa. You need to fill in that role, and the Twins are already, you know, more league average as a right-handed hitting group than they were above league average with Correa. Byron Buxton, it's hard to rely on him from the right side to be healthy. I think Jose Miranda is special, but he can't be your best right-handed hitter in 2023. If Gio Rochelle is back, I, I also say he can't be your best right-handed hitter in 2023. It just I don't think it's tenable for a team that wants to compete and wants to make the playoffs for your best right-handed hitter to be like a 115, 120 way to runs created plus guy. You need more upside from that, especially because the rotation doesn't look like it's going to be some world-beating group. Like you need your offense to perform. The identity last year was the offense they're going to hit. And they hit a decent amount. And then they'd go into those long slumps and guys got hurt and the offense ended up looking like a weakness at the end of the year because Jake Cave was hitting fifth, you know? But I think... Adding a big right-handed bat would go a long way. Uh, Aaron Judge, it's not going to happen. But Aaron Judge, Carlos Correa, Wilson Contreras, Xander Bogarts, Trey Turner, uh, Dansby Swanson could fit into that group. But Swanson's more of a a Jose Miranda type of hitter. I think, obviously, great defender, gold glove winner at shortstop. But he's more of a Miranda type of hitter. I think the bar for this is Jose Miranda going into the season, hoping Byron Buxton's healthy. Jose Miranda is your third best right-handed hitter in the lineup. Look at the best teams. Like Houston is a great example of this. They have three great right-handed hitters, or they did when Yuli Gurriel was in his heyday, but at least two great right-handed hitters and two great left-handed hitters, Altuve and Bregman from the right side, Alvarez and Tucker from the left side. If you can differentiate a lineup 
That is a huge advantage. It makes you matchup proof. It makes you more consistent as an offense, and the Twins need that badly. They need it sorely in 2023. A little bit of a drop-off from one to two. My number one need this offseason is shocker for a bunch of offseasons in a row. It's been a need, not the top need last year, but two years ago it probably was, is shortstop. Twins need a new shortstop. They're losing an all-star caliber, you know, superstar level player in Carlos Correa in free agency. They can re-sign him. Shocker, they can re-sign him. And they can fill one and two by signing Carlos Correa. But I would also say, if they were to sign Carlos Correa, a big right-handed bat would be pushed down to like the sixth highest need. Like it would still be a need to add another right-handed corner bat. But the, the bar for it would be lower just because you got Correa back. And the offense was you know, above average last year. They got a bunch of guys on base. They struggled with runners in scoring position. I expect that to even out if the same group was to return and hopefully be healthy in 2023 or healthier. I would expect those numbers to even out. And for the Twins, you know, with the way to runs created plus against right-handed pitching tied for fifth, I would expect them to score a lot more runs with Correa, with Buxton, with Polanco, with Arise, with Miranda in 2023 than they did for much of 2022. They still had a good offense for the first half of the season. They just didn't cash in very many runs with runners on base. And I, again, would expect that to improve if Correa were to come back in 2023. But shortstop is the biggest need. This is a top-heavy class with Correa, with Xander Bogarts, Trey Turner, Dansby Swanson. We know the names. We know they're available. Trade targets are to be determined. I'm going to look into that. You know, I don't think there's anybody who jumps off the page as a trade target on the shortstop market. It's something I'm going to look into and have for the show. What I do know is that there are four premier shortstops on the market. At least two of them are MVP caliber players, and the other two are not bad either <laughs> in uh, Swanson and Bogarts. I would say Turner and Correa are the top two in whichever order you prefer. It's a top-heavy class. Lewis and Lee are factors. Royce Lewis and Brooks Lee are factors in this decision. I'm fascinated by this and what they'll do. And most likely what they'll do is add an Elvis Andrus or a Jose Iglesias or a Didi Gregorius or somebody well below the top line. They shouldn't. They shouldn't do that. It should be Correa. He fit in great with this team. He makes a ton of sense. He's a free agent. It should be him. And their top two needs are needs that Correa fills. A shortstop and a big right-handed bat. Shortstop's the biggest need because shortstop's such an important position on the field. Defensively, offensively, I talk about the the leadership factor of a shortstop, like the leader of the infield. Usually leaders of teams are often at premier positions and shortstop is one of them. Having a great shortstop raises the, the floor level of your team. And I think having a great shortstop is an opportunity for the Twins this offseason. It could be an opportunity in the future with Royce Lewis, but we just don't know. It could be an opportunity with Brooks Lee. We just don't know if A, they're going to stick at short and B, if they're going to be good major leaguers for a long time and stay healthy. We know Carlos Correa is great. We know he's an outstanding defender. We know he can hit. We know he's a leader. That's why he makes the most sense and why he makes the most sense to fill the number one need on the roster that he's leaving. He's leaving that hole at number one. Shortstop, a big bat, preferably a right-handed bat, a frontline starter, a high-end reliever, and a catcher. Those are the top five biggest needs for the Twins this offseason. There is a drop between one and two. But what I will say is the weight of this list is less than it was a year ago. I would say that the equalized weight of two through five, it's a pretty it's a pretty close gap. Like you could honestly talk me into catcher being as high as number three. You could talk me into a high-end reliever being as high as number two. I think shortstop is the clear number one. I mean, maybe you think frontline starter is clear number one, but I think a shortstop is, is number one. That's unquestionable to me. And then the next four, you could honestly move these around and I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised by it. You could say frontline starter is number two. A big right-handed bat is number five. You know, a high-end reliever is number three. However you shifted this, I could see it. And honestly, I could be talked off shortstop at number one. If you said, Nash, what if they go out and get Rodon and Brandon Woodruff and then they sign Elvis Andrus? Would you be happy with that outcome? I'd be like, ooh. They missed out on Correa, but they got two great frontline starters. Like there's there's different ways they can go about this in this winter. And that's what makes this winter so fascinating. They can fill these holes with premier options. Every single one of these holes has a premier option available. And many of these you can fill 
or two, at least two, you can fill with one addition. In the case of Contreras, in the case of Correa and Turner and Bogarts, you can fill two of them with one swift move. High-end reliever is a high-end reliever, and you're going to have to go get that, and it's going to fill its own need. I don't view the Twins as being huge players in the relief market. I think they'll sign another reliever. I don't think it's going to be a high-end reliever, just given the, the history of this team. But they've also shown they've been willing to do things more recently that they haven't been willing to do in the past, like trade for Jorge Lopez, who is a, a sell-high candidate you know, from Baltimore. And we'll see. We'll see what they do. We'll see how they fill these holes. Free agency opens Thursday. How aggressive are the Minnesota Twins going to be in free agency on the trade market? Are they going to sit around for a while? Are they going to let the, the chips fall? Are they going to let you know the Jenga pieces fall in before they come in and, and get involved? I would put my money on yes. But what I do know for a fact is they have five clear needs. You could argue they have more, but they have five clear needs right here on this list. And it's shortstop, a big bat that's preferably right-handed, a frontline starter, a high-end reliever, and a catcher. Whether that's a starting catcher, a backup catcher, a platoon catcher, however you view that, however you view that need. I want to know what you think. Do you, do you like this list? What would be your top five? How would you rank your top five? And how pressing are these needs? Because I would put shortstop at you know, a reasonably pressing need. I would put a big right-handed bat as a need. Like that's a clear need to me. A frontline starter is a clear need. I could be talked into that being a pressing need. A high-end reliever is a clear need to me. And a catcher is a clear need. That's a hole. You have your holes you know will be filled. We know shortstop's going to be filled. I, the shortstop who's going to start on opening day is not in the organization because Royce Lewis is hurt. If he wasn't, he's probably your opening day shortstop. Right now, he's not in the organization, the starting shortstop on opening day. So they will fill that hole and they will fill the catcher hole. So one in five, we know they will fill. Will they go get a big bat? Will that be the shortstop they add? Will they get a frontline starter? Will they get a high-end reliever? Are they just going to fill one in five, you know, with Andrews and Sandy Leone and make a couple of fringe moves out of, you know, a reliever, not a high-end reliever, just a reliever, you know, add a right-handed platoon bat in the outfield, you know, Kyle Garlic type, maybe add a starter, you know, a two, three starter and Yavaldi or Jamison Tyone. What are they going to do? How are they going to spend the money they have available because the books are clean? How are they going to do it? How are they going to fill these holes and how aggressive are they going to be in filling these holes? I don't know if you can tell. I'm super, super interested and intrigued by this offseason. I'm going to be here breaking it down with you. Matt Braun is coming on Thursday. Matt and I are going to talk all about this free agent class, who he would target, who I would target, when I would do it, what he expects, what I expect. It's all coming at you on Thursday from our friend Matt Braun from twinsdaily.com. I want to thank you so much for making Lockdown Twins your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Lockdown Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks so much for listening. As always, have a great day and go Twins.